Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jani and I am an OBGYN intern. Today I am going to be chit chatting a little bit with you about why I chose OBGYN. So I know there's a ton of videos out there, there's a ton of blog posts about it, and I just wanted to let you know my personal reasons of why I love what I do and why I chose this field. So let's go back a little bit. So when I went to medical school and when I applied for residency, I wasn't really thinking about things in my life that I had never noticed that kind of hinted at the fact that I would probably be into women's health. So when I was in college, I took a bunch of like reproductive um, system classes. I took a bunch of like sexuality classes. Um, I think that's a pretty big hint, but I was still a little bit like skeptical about it. If we rewind even further, uh, back in 2009, so almost 10 years ago, I went to this forum called um, National Youth Leadership Forum in Medicine. It was in Boston and it was a bunch of like high school kids who had an interest in medicine and they would give us like a whole, I think it was seven to ten days of different things that had to do with the world of medicine, going to college, what to go for, how the lifestyle would be, getting to know a bunch of doctors, getting to see surgery, getting to go to the hospital. It was super fun back then. But um, the point of the story is that I remember, I've always remembered this really incredible documentary that we watched. It was called Zap Mama, Love, Labor, Loss, and it's a documentary by Lisa Russell. And basically this documentary um, centers around different communities in Africa, like Niger, Nigeria, among others, in where um, access to healthcare, especially gynecologic and obstetrical care is very limited. And in addition to that, nutrition is an issue. Nutrition is pretty poor in that region. And when these women go into labor, um, basically their own body cannot tolerate the labor. And a lot of these women end up delivering stillborn babies, but they have been in labor for hours, maybe days. And the pressure of the baby's head on the pubic bone and the bladder uh, causes some damage and causes a connection between the bladder and the vagina and this is called a fistula. These women then suffer from urinary incontinence and um, they are shunned by their husbands and their families because they smell like urine and they are sometimes even removed from their communities and abandoned. The incredible part is that communities of just women that all suffer from this condition have um, come to be and they welcome these women. And what Lisa Russell did was she worked with a couple of clinics that um, developed, especially for these women, and they did um, financial studies and they did uh, clinical studies and they found that these women would benefit either from having access to care or having access to a c-section when their labor is prolonged because the cost of a c-section in that region would be so much more affordable than the cost of their repair to repair the fistula that they have in the end and i remember sitting there in this huge auditorium watching this documentary and i was just taken aback i felt super passionate about learning more about women's health and different issues worldwide that affect affect women everywhere and if you fast forward again like i said when i was in college and i was taking all of these reproduction classes and access to birth control and sexually transmitted diseases and all of these things, it kind of is a foreshadowing of if I go into medicine, what I'm going to go into. But I had never made the connection of connecting the dots until I was in one of my interviews. 
and they I don't remember what question they asked me but it basically brought all of these memories back and together and I was like whoa I never saw things this way that I was pretty much destined to go into OBGYN into obstetrics and gynecology and yeah that's a little bit of a background story right there in when I was in college before I was in medical school I got the opportunity to do some shadowing and this is something that I recommend to all of you pre-meds out there and even high schoolers if you have a family member or a really good family friend that you can shadow if you are thinking of going into medicine it's a great experience to give you a little bit of a picture of how your life can be like what the workload is like and it can give you a better idea of if you're suited for this or not and there's so many other um, professions out there that are related to healthcare that are not being a doctor because it's a lot of sacrifice and there's so many alternatives so you can go anywhere from nursing to text to being a PA to being an NP there is endless opportunities out there to participate in healthcare and be involved in patient care and make a difference. Um, so going back to the shadowing, sorry I feel like I'm going on like 10,000 tangents but it's just the way that my brain works and I don't have any of this written down, maybe that's something I should do in the future to kind of like keep me on track. But when I was shadowing, um, I went through all the departments in the medical school where I was doing research. And I went door to door to all the directors and I was like, hey, so I'm in college, I'm thinking of applying to medicine and I kind of want to do a shadowing. And a lot of people were just like, nope, sorry, we don't have that opportunity. And one of the departments that said yes, or the only department that said yes, was OBGYN. So they told me to go hang out in labor and delivery with a couple of the residents and to visit their clinic every once in a while. So I did precisely that and I remember my life basically changed when I was in labor and delivery. Um, we had, I was basically just there hanging out with the residents trying to help them out. So what I would do is patient, patients that had been seen but didn't need a check yet, I would just pop in and say, hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Are you doing okay? Is there anything we can do for you? And I remember walking into this room and this lady, she's sitting there like, <sighs> she looks like, she looks really anxious. She's like hyperventilating. And I'm like, are you okay, sweetie? Like, do you need anything? She's like, I feel a lot of pressure. I just, I feel pressure. And I remember one of the residents telling me, usually when patients are about to deliver, they're always complaining about pressure and like feeling the urge to pee and things like that and when she said that it just like clicked in my mind so I went to get the resident and the resident came running they checked the patient and voila she was ready to deliver so we're moving her from like the room that she was laboring in to the delivery room but her husband wasn't in there yet um, he was getting his scrubs to change and be able to be in the room and this lady was just like freaking out. She was super anxious, super scared. And I remember telling her, just grab my hand. She's like, I don't want to hurt you. And I was like, it doesn't matter. You're all alone. I just want you to be okay. I just want you to be calm. So I gave her my hand. She pushed out the baby. Her husband came in like midway through her delivering the baby. And I remember at the end of that, she was so grateful. And she was like, what is your name? Thank you so much for being there and this means a lot. I'm sorry if I squished your hand and I carry that moment with me every single day to the point where I wrote my whole um, a personal statement for residency around this experience, around how emotional I am and how like deep in my heart this is. and. That is the moment where I said, like, I I think I want to go into medicine and probably OBGYN, but I wasn't 100% sure. Fast forward a little bit more to medical school. Uh, as soon as medical school started, um, I got involved in the interest group and we had health fairs and they taught us how to do pap smears and all of these cool things. 
and I was pretty much sold. I, from that day forward, I was like, I'm going to be an OBGYN. And, but I didn't really know why. I didn't know why I liked it. So basically, um, in the end, what attracted me to the specialty is you have a ton of different patients. You have patients from teenagers to elderly women, and all these patients get to see you for most of their life if you practice in the same place. In addition to that, you get to experience the most beautiful part of medicine, which is bringing life into this world. That is my absolute favorite thing. So I have an ability to connect with pregnant women that I can't really explain. Um, a lot of people find it difficult because they can be very stubborn or they can be pretty set in their ways and have their own fears and all of their expectations of how they want things. But for some reason, I find it so easy to talk to them and connect with them and bring them from like super anxiety to manageable anxiety. And it just brings me so much joy and excitement to be able to bring these babies into the world. In addition to that, I love the fast-paced lifestyle. Even though some people are super scared and they run away from the OBGYN lifestyle, I just love it. I love the unpredictability of it. I love that if you're in the clinic, uh, you can have a delivery and you kind of have to run out and go to the delivery and come back. Sometimes if you're on call, you have to do emergency surgery. Uh, you do surgery, you're in the OR, you're a surgeon. Um, you get to see all of these different things and it's just incredible, unpredictable, and I get bored very easily. I need adrenaline. I need something that keeps me on my feet and gives me enough energy to never get bored and, you know, keep going every day. So a lot of these things are what attracted me to fully pull the plunge and say, I want to be an OBGYN. I realized though that I don't love being in the OR all the time. I am not like a super surgeon. I am not like all about surgery at this point. I, I can, I love surgery, but I don't see myself fully devoting myself to surgery. So that's one reason surgery was out. Um, I love the babies. The babies are amazing. They're super cute and adorable. But um, I realized dealing with the parents sometimes can be really hard and I didn't really want that. Plus, I don't love the whole clinic aspect of it. I maybe like a little bit of neonatology, but then it's also a really depressing scene sometimes, and it just breaks my heart to see these tiny babies hooked to like a billion machines, and it breaks my heart. So I feel like I would be very emotionally invested if I were a neonatologist, and that could possibly affect my patient care, and I really didn't want to do peds. <laughs> So that's another reason that's why peds was out the door. Internal medicine, we do a little bit of internal medicine in primary care as an OBGYN. A lot of women um, don't have a PCP and they only see their OBGYN like once a year. Um, so we do a little bit of that routine screening and making sure your patients get their screenings on time, they get annual labs to make sure that they're healthy, they, make sure they don't have any medical conditions that need attention to, and if, needs, if we need to, we refer them to the appropriate um, medical specialist, like an internal medicine, or recommending a family practitioner, or a general practitioner, etc, etc. Um, let's see. Uh, psychiatry. So, psych is actually pretty interesting. I had a ton of fun in my rotation learning. It was actually very anxiety inducing for me to be on a psych rotation, but um, I actually enjoyed it a lot. The only thing that I didn't like was that as a psychiatrist, you cannot have that, you cannot be so open. You cannot bond as much with your patient as you can in other specialties. So you, you can't be vulnerable with your patient at the same time. You kind of have to be their strength. You kind of have to be their like shoulder to cry on. And you have to kind of be the bigger person in a, in a way. And um, 
I really like being open with my patients and sharing my own experiences because I find that it helps them relate to you a little bit better and it makes them know, hey, you're a human too and I'm not alone and I'm here with you. And that's something that I truly love about my field is that I am allowed that. I am allowed to bond and share with my patient what I want. Oh, internal medicine. So internal medicine. Um, so internal medicine was fun. There is a lot to learn in internal medicine. It's a little bit overwhelming actually, but what I don't like about internal medicine is if you're not a hospitalist, then you are in your office all day and then you have to fight with insurances to get your patient's medications and then everyone has diabetes and hypertension and it's just the same thing over and over again. And I feel like I would get a little bit bored. I need more spontaneity and more unpredictability in my day to day. So that's one of the things that, you know, I enjoyed internal medicine, but I preferred having more variety. In addition, nowadays you have so many other things you can do as an OBGYN. There's some people who go into like the cosmetics part of it. They do Botox and they do a little bit more fancy stuff. Um, you have contraception, so you can do family planning, you can do a little bit of infertility, so you can do Clomid and certain aspects if you need something more advanced that you can refer to an REI. Um, but I really love all the autonomy and the variety that you have in OBGYN that you don't have in other fields. Um, maybe family medicine is pretty similar in the fact that you see a broad range of patients from all ages. But I found family pretty routine as well, um, and I don't love being in the office all the time. I really like the hospital. So, emergency medicine. Why didn't I go into emergency medicine? Even though I love parts of emergency medicine, you have the spontaneity, you have the unpredictability factor. Um, I just, I don't know, there's something about it that bores me sometimes and like I feel like you see interesting things every once in a while but most of the time you see the same things and you see a lot of people using the ED for primary care and I'd rather have more time to do primary care than do primary care in the ED where you're more time constrained you have to move patients out quickly and it just it doesn't fulfill me as much as other specialties did and as much as OB did because I, if you haven't been able to tell by now, I really love OB and I love what I do and it makes me incredibly happy. So yeah, that's why emergency medicine did not work for me. So moving on to where I am in my journey right now. So even though all of those reasons are the reasons I came into OBGYN, I have a little bit of a different perspective. Um, so before, I really like the fact that you can have a balance between office work and hospital work, but I am finding myself I enjoy being in the hospital a little bit more than I enjoy being in clinic. Um, and even though I love a lot of the issues from gynecology, I love obstetrics so much. Um, so what I'm leaning towards right now, I have a couple options. So sometimes I dwell in what I want to do and I know it's early in my career, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an intern, but I'm kind of an OCD planner sometimes, don't judge me. Um, but some of the things that I really enjoy doing are being in the hospital and being in labor and delivery and doing triage and doing all the emergency stuff. So. I dwell on whether I want to be a hospitalist and be an OB hospitalist and just do like labor and delivery, do like shift work and not have an office or work in an academic setting where I can be a hospitalist but also have a little bit of clinic or I dwell on maybe um, working in a more varied setting and being mostly an OB clinician with some family planning and contraceptive and all that jazz. Uh, sometimes I also consider if I want to be a maternal fetal specialist and subspecialize and do a fellowship. I've also dwindled with the idea of REI because I find 
the endocrinology and infertility aspect of it incredibly interesting. Um, the only thing about doing a fellowship and subspecializing is that you lose so many other components of that spontaneity and you go a little bit more into the routine aspect of it. I don't, I, and I don't know, I don't know if I, if I can let all of that go. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> That's where I am now, and those are the reasons where why I chose OBGYN over other specialties. And yeah, so if you have any recommendations of things that I can look into, or if you know an REI or an MFM, and they have, or if you are one and you have any insight on how I can keep that spontaneity and um, adrenaline pumping throughout a fellowship, then I'd be more than happy to take it into conservation. And thank you so much for watching. I hope that you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I hope that you join me in my next video. Bye guys.